with the help of an excited plane load of volunteers. Oh, he's a little turbulence! Woo! Adam and Janie are asking if airlines around the world have got it wrong. And next up is an experiment in anarchy. After business class, it's every passenger for themselves. Now, all the rest of you, there are no assigned seats and no assigned rows. So when I say, which is now, you can all board the airplane. Whoa! In an orderly fashion. In the earlier random test, there were assigned seats, but this is just a free-for-all. This is interesting. There's no assigned seating, no order at all, and so what they're doing is actually the opposite of the back to front. They're filling up the front first and then going backwards, which doesn't seem like it would be the most efficient way of doing it because they're blocking the aisle right in the beginning of the plane. But somewhat counterintuitively, the lack of seat assignments leads to the fastest time so far. It saves on time, but according to a customer survey score of minus five, not on stress. This is fascinating. I've just finished scoring the random random boarding method, and they hated this method. Overwhelmingly, they voted it as terrible. And I think this is an interesting window into human psychology. I think humans like structure. We want to know that there's a structure, even if it takes us longer. It appeals to our sense of justice that things are happening for a reason. That's fascinating. Which leaves the results looking like this. Despite surveys indicating that waiting and queuing is the single biggest complaint for frequent flyers, it seems a sense of order and structure is just as important. Which leaves one final attempt by the team to find the perfect boarding solution. One that might provide speed, structure, and satisfaction. Next up is a method called the reverse pyramid. It's pretty complex. In fact, the passengers are told merely to board by zones which are pre-sorted on their tickets. The best way to explain it to you guys is with the editor's help. Editors, if you put up a graphic, please, and show the zones as they board. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's pretty complicated. It's supposed to be pretty fast. We're going to find out. It appears complicated, but with zones and seat numbers printed on the tickets, it's actually incredibly simple. You have group two on your ticket, you may board the airplane. This one appears to be working kind of like the Wilma techniques, where it's filling on the outside and then gradually works its way towards the middle. Group three may now board the airplane. But the pyramid strategy ends up doing that in blocks, which may or may not help it. And when the timer stops at 15.10, it's back to the shop on an imaginary flight to make their final assessment. Buckle in. Okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, two. So where do we stand? Well, the myth was that the most common technique that airlines use for boarding a plane that is from back to front also happened to be the slowest and least efficient method of putting people onto an airplane. And based on our testing, I have to say it's myth confirmed. Indeed. But you know what's interesting is that the fastest technique we tried was also the least popular. That might be why most airlines don't use it. Well, the good news is that the three most popular techniques we tried are significantly faster than the back to front technique. So those are the ones we should be using. Absolutely. You hear that, airlines?